Kwame Nkrumah was an extraordinary man. He was a visionary leader. He fought tirelessly for his people. Nkrumah led Ghana to independence. He became the country's first president. Nkrumah's impact extended beyond Ghana. He believed in a united Africa. He dreamt of a continent free from colonial rule. Nkrumah became a symbol of hope. He inspired generations of Africans. His journey was not easy. He faced many challenges, but Nkrumah never gave up. He remained committed to his vision. He fought for freedom, unity, and progress. Today, we remember Kwame Nkrumah. We celebrate his life and legacy. He left an indelible mark on history. His story continues to inspire us. Kwame Nkrumah was born in the small village of Nkrofu, located in the Gold Coast, which is present-day Ghana. The year was 1909, a time of significant change in colonial influence. The Gold Coast was under British colonial rule, which affected every aspect of life. Life was not easy for many people. Nkrumah's family was humble, living modestly and working hard to make ends meet. His father was a skilled goldsmith, crafting intricate pieces of jewellery and artefacts. His mother was a trader, selling goods in the local market to support the family. Despite their modest means, they recognised the importance of education and its potential to change lives. They made sure Nkrumah went to school, understanding that education was the key to a better future. Nkrumah excelled in his studies, showing a natural aptitude for learning and a keen intellect. He was a bright and curious student, always eager to learn more and ask questions. He attended Akimoto College, a prestigious institution known for its rigorous academic programs. There he delved into subjects like history, philosophy and politics, which broadened his understanding of the world. These subjects ignited a fire in him, sparking a passion for social justice and political change. In 1935, Nkrumah travelled to America, seeking further education and new opportunities. He continued his education at Lincoln University, an institution that welcomed students from diverse backgrounds. He earned degrees in economics and sociology, gaining a deeper understanding of societal structures and issues. During his time in America, he also became actively involved in Pan-African movements. He met other activists who shared his vision. Together, they shared a dream of a free and united Africa, a vision that would guide Nkrumah's future endeavors and shape his legacy. Nkrumah's time in America was transformative. It was during this period that he began to see the world through a different lens. He witnessed the struggles of African Americans who were fighting against the oppressive Jim Crow laws. He learned about their fight for civil rights, observing the courage and determination of leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. He drew inspiration from their resilience, seeing how communities came together in the face of adversity. He read the works of great thinkers, immersing himself in the ideas that would shape his own political philosophy. He studied the ideas of Marcus Garvey and Webb Du Bois. They advocated for Pan-Africanism, a movement that sought to unify and uplift people of African descent. They believed in the power of unity, emphasizing that collective strength was essential for overcoming oppression. Their words resonated deeply with Nkrumah, igniting a passion within him to fight for the rights of his own people. In 1945, he moved to London, a city that was a hub for political activism and intellectual exchange. He continued his political activism, engaging with other activists and thinkers who shared his vision for a liberated Africa. He helped organize the Fifth Pan-African Congress, a pivotal event that brought together leaders from across the African continent. This event brought together African leaders who discussed strategies for achieving independence and self-governance, they discussed a way forward for their continent, laying the groundwork for future movements toward freedom. Nkrumah returned to the Gold Coast in 1947, filled with a renewed sense of purpose and determination. He was determined to fight for independence, believing that his people deserved to be free from colonial rule. He believed the time for change had come and that the moment was ripe for action. He was ready to lead his people to freedom, envisioning a future where Ghana would stand as a beacon of hope and progress for all of Africa. Back in the Gold Coast, Nkrumah hit the ground running. He joined the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC. This party was fighting for self-government, but Nkrumah wanted more. He wanted full independence. He felt the UGCC was not moving fast enough. 
he decided to form his own party. In 1949, Nkrumah founded the Convention People's Party, CPP. It quickly gained popularity. People were drawn to Nkrumah's message. He spoke about freedom, justice and equality. He promised a better future for all. The CPP organized rallies and protests. They demanded an end to colonial rule. Nkrumah's powerful speeches energized the nation. He gave people hope. He became a symbol of resistance. Section 5. A New Dawn and Krumar's Vision for Ghana. The British government came under pressure. They could no longer ignore the demands for independence. They agreed to hold elections. In 1951, the CPPP won a landslide victory. Nkrumah became the leader of government business. He was just one step away from his ultimate goal. On March 6, 1957, Ghana gained its independence. It was a momentous occasion. People celebrated in the streets. The Gold Coast was no more. It was now Ghana, a free and independent nation. Nkrumah became Ghana's first president. He had achieved his dream, but his work was far from over. He had a vision for Ghana. He wanted to build a prosperous and united nation. Section 6, United Africa, the dream of Pan-Africanism. This dream was a vision of a united and strong Africa, free from the chains of colonialism and imperialism. Nkrumah believed deeply in Pan-Africanism. He envisioned a future where the African continent would stand united as one. He knew that together, African nations would be stronger, more resilient, and capable of overcoming any challenge. To bring this vision to life, he hosted the first All-African People's Conference in Accra, Ghana in 1958. Leaders from across the African continent attended this historic event. They discussed various ways to promote unity, cooperation and mutual support among their nations. Nkrumah also played a pivotal role in the formation of the Organization of African Unity, or OAU, in 1963. This organization aimed to promote solidarity, peace and collaboration among African states. It was a major step towards a more united and cohesive Africa, striving for collective progress. Nkrumah's vision extended beyond the African continent. He saw a world where African nations could influence global affairs. He wanted to see an end to colonialism and imperialism worldwide, advocating for freedom and justice for all oppressed peoples. He believed in a world where all nations, regardless of size or power, were treated as equals. Nkrumah's tireless efforts and unwavering dedication made him a global icon and a beacon of hope. He became a symbol of hope and inspiration for oppressed people everywhere, igniting movements for freedom and equality across the globe. Section 7, Building a Nation, Nkrumah's Achievements in Ghana. Nkrumah said about building a new Ghana. He focused on education, healthcare and infrastructure. He believed these were the foundations of progress. He expanded access to education. He built new schools and universities. He wanted to empower future generations. He knew that education was the key to development. He improved healthcare facilities. He made healthcare more affordable. He wanted to ensure the well-being of his people. And Krumah invested heavily in infrastructure. He built roads, bridges and dams. He wanted to connect the country and boost the economy. His most ambitious project was the Akasombo Dam. It provided electricity to Ghana and neighboring countries. It was a symbol of progress and development. Section 8, Trials and Tribulations, Challenges, faced by Nkrumah. Nkrumah's rule was not without its challenges. He faced opposition from some quarters. His opponents criticized his socialist policies. They accused him of becoming authoritarian. Ghana also faced economic difficulties. The prices of cocoa, a major export, fell. This hurt the Ghanaian economy. Nkrumah's government became more authoritarian. He introduced laws that limited freedom of speech. He wanted to silence his critics and maintain control. He survived several assassination attempts. He became increasingly paranoid. He saw enemies everywhere. His grip on power tightened. These actions eroded some of the public support he had enjoyed. People who once admired him became disillusioned. The country was becoming divided. Section 9. The Untimely Fall. Nkrumah's Overthrow and Exile. In 1966, while Nkrumah was on a trip to Vietnam, a military coup took place in Ghana. The army seized control of the government. Nkrumah was overthrown. He was forced into exile. He found refuge in Guinea. He was deeply saddened by the events. He had dedicated his life to Ghana. Now, he was a man without a country. 
Despite the coup, Nkrumah remained committed to his ideals. He continued to write and speak about Pan-Africanism. He believed that one day Africa would be united. Nkrumah lived in exile for six years. He never returned to Ghana. He died in Bucharest, Romania in 1972 at the age of 62. Section 10, a legacy endures Nkrumah's impact on Ghana and Africa. Kwame Nkrumah left an indelible mark on history. He was a visionary leader who fought tirelessly for his people. He led Ghana to independence and became an icon of the Pan-African movement. His legacy is complex and multifaceted. He was a man of great achievements and some failures. But his impact on Ghana and Africa is undeniable. Nkrumah's ideas continue to inspire people around the world. He is remembered as a champion of freedom, justice and equality. In Ghana, he is considered the father of the nation. His birthday is a national holiday. His image appears on the country's currency. His name is etched in the hearts of Ghanaians. Section 11, remembering the visionary Nkrumah's enduring inspiration. Kwame Nkrumah's story is a reminder that one person can make a difference. He was a man of humble beginnings who rose to become a global icon. He taught us the importance of education, unity and self-determination. He showed us that with courage and determination we can overcome any obstacle. Today, as we face new challenges, we can draw inspiration from Nkrumah's life and legacy. Let us honor his memory by continuing to fight for a more just and equitable world. Let us strive to create a world where all people are free and equal. Let us never give up on the dream of a united Africa.